Hey folks, I've had several of you ask about this challenge question. Um, the first thing I would say about it is make sure you uh, understand all of the other Picard's problems. Um, those are sort of more important for the existence uniqueness. Uh, but this gives us an interesting situation where we actually write out a number of the non-unique solutions to an IVP. So here you can see we've got the given ODE and some initial condition that just requires that regardless of what our initial time value is, the initial Y value, the initial you know, population amount or whatever we want to think of, is zero. And so um, I went ahead and s set this in. We're, we're in normal form here, so I'm calling this f of x, y. This is that y to the one-third power. And Picard's theorem guarantees that we have a solution on any interval containing that point because this function is continuous on that interval. And so Picard's theorem does guarantee a solution to this IVP. What's interesting, though, is if we take the partial derivative of that function on the right-hand side when we're in normal form with respect to the variable y, this is what we end up with, and we see that this expression here is not defined for y equals 0, so this function f sub y is certainly not continuous for any interval containing an ordered pair of the form x not comma 0, which is precisely what our initial condition is. We've got an initial y value of 0, but the partial derivative of the right-hand side of this function in normal form is not continuous at zero, so Picard's does not guarantee a unique solution. So notice the difference here. We're guaranteed a solution by Picard's, but not unique because of this scenario here. So what I went ahead and did then is it found several of the solutions. By inspection, I just found one solution was y prime of x equals zero. Notice that if I just take the zero function and take its derivative, this gives me a true statement here. And certainly for any x coordinate that I choose, the y coordinate of that position, that uh, zero function is zero. So this is one of my several solutions to this uh, problem. The next one I obtained just by doing separation of variables. So here we have the original ODE and I separated the variables here dividing over the y to one-third and then treating this as the fraction dy over dx and I went through and I solved this uh, and I found that for any choice of x naught, this is our solution. So if, if I did that too quickly, folks, all I'm doing here is separation of variables, integrating both sides, and then solving for the function y because it's not too difficult to do so. Notice the presence of that plus or minus. And then uh, I went ahead and plugged in my initial condition and found that the c value would be minus two-thirds x naught, and that gives us another solution, or actually another pair of solutions to the IVP. Those two parts of this problem I don't think are too hard. What students usually have trouble with is building these families of solutions. So here what I did is I kind of took a, a uh, composition of these two solutions. Here we have uh, z the function is 0 until we get to a certain point A, and then we start following this function. So that's how I constructed this one family of solutions. And then we also have the solution where our function is 0 up to a point, and then we have the negative solution here. Oops, and I've dropped the uh, negative sign on that. I'll add that here. Uh, it should be in green. And there we have another family of solutions. A lot of times students have a hard time understanding what I'm saying by these families of solutions. So what I did is I went ahead and built a, a Desmos demonstration for us to take a look at. So pulling that up, this is what I end up with. Hopefully, let's see here, let's make it the right size. So hopefully you can see this okay. So in this Desmos, Desmos demonstration, what I first have is my slope field. And Desmos isn't the best application for plotting slope fields. Um, so this is a little bit clunky to look at, but the slider capabilities are what I want. So here you can see that for any point uh, in the xy plane, I computed the, the value of the derivative there. and I, So I put a uh, vector of magnitude 1, a unit vector, uh, whose slope matches what the uh, derivative is at that point. So we've done these slope fields before. So then what I have here, as you can see here, I can adjust my initial condition by moving this slider. Here we've got x naught currently set to negative 5.4, and I can slide it around. Okay. I also have two other sliders that I'll highlight in just a minute. So the first thing I want to point out is we had this solution, y1 equals 0. That solves both the ODE in that you can see that we are on, uh, that this follows one of my flow lines of my slope field. It's a little hard to see here because I've made those small, but maybe you can see those purple dashed lines 
um, that are right along the x-axis. And so there's this green uh, solution curve for y sub 1 equals 0 certainly satisfies it certainly is a trajectory curve that follows the slope field and we verified that it's, it solved the ODE and notice that it also satisfies the initial condition in that it passes through the initial condition almost trivially. The second two solutions we found were this solution here and that should look familiar or the opposite solution and I've plotted both of those there. So you can see these two solutions. Either one of those which don't exist for large time, they don't exist for time values to the left of x naught, but they do satisfy the ODE, and you can see that, that they follow that slope curve, and they pass through this point, although they don't pass through, like the, the interval of existence only starts at x naught and continues onward. And then what students have a hard time with, and this is what I wanted to highlight here, is these families of solutions. So let me turn on this one here. This is that first family of solution. Please, this is a little bit clunky to read. What I'm saying here is that, first of all, I need my a value to be greater than my x naught, otherwise the solution doesn't work. So notice until my a value here is bigger than x naught, I don't get any solution at all for that family of solutions. Okay. Then here you can see I can adjust my x naught, although if I take it to the right of the a value, I don't get a solution. But here you can see what I've got is this curve looks somewhat similar to, say, this solution curve right here uh, at this point, and I've piecewised it together with the original y sub 1 equals 0 solution curve. And so we use this solution up to some point, and as long as that point is to the right of t naught, uh, at or to the right of uh, x naught, we can then um, we can then add on to it in piecewise this second curve. And notice at both for both parts of this piecewise function, we are satisfying the uh, direction field um, for this ODE. Okay. Likewise here, if I turn this one on, that's a little harder to see uh, just with the colors. If I turn this one on here, though, you can see again, as long as my, um, let me go ahead and adjust B here, as long as my B is to the right of X naught, oop, to the left of it, it disappears, at or to the right of X naught, so notice right at it, this uh, should look like my third solution here off just ever so slightly. Let's see here. I can change this to 2.3 perhaps. 2.3. So now it's hard to tell, but the these two solutions, the orange and the uh, yellow, are on top of each other. Oops. And so um, these are my families of solutions. Notice that they all that this, for example, this orange family here satisfies the fact that uh, we our trajectory curves within the direction field that we've sketched and we pass through that initial condition. So folks, I hope that helps to clarify what I mean by these families of solutions. If not, don't worry, this is a challenge problem, but um, I was getting a number of questions on it, so I hope this helps.